করি সবাইকে ঈদ মোবারক ঈদের শুভেচ্ছা আসসালামু আলাইকুম আর আমি থ্যাংকস টু দা অর্গানাইজার অফ সার্টিফিকেট কোর্স ফর পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট সার্টিফিকেট কোর্স ফর ফ্যামিলি মেডিসিন আমাকে একটা সুযোগ দেওয়ার জন্য একটা লেকচার দেওয়ার জন্য আমার লেকচারের বিষয়টা হচ্ছে ইনফার্টিলিটি অর্থাৎ বাংলায় বলা হয় বন্ধাত্ব বাই ডেফিনেশন ইনফার্টিলিটি ইজ ফেলিয়ার টু কনসিভ উইদ ইন ওয়ান ইয়ার অফ ফুল অপরচুনিটি ইন দ্য কাপল অফ রিপ্রোডাকটিভ এজ ইনফার্টিলিটি ইজ সিমস টু বি অ্যান অ্যাবসুলিট কন্ডিশন বাট সো উই ইউজ দ্য টার্ম নাও সাব ফার্টিলিটি which is, seems to be an appropriate term as the uh, as the infertile couple may be blessed with children later on so better the term is sub fertility we have classification in sub fertility primary sub fertility or infertility where patient who have never where the couples never have conceived or secondary infertility where patient has a previous pregnancy but failure to conceive subsequently Incidence varies from areas to areas. Average 10 to 30% in the reproductive age. But usually we see getting full opportunity by one year, 80% of the couples are conceived. And by next, 10, next one year, 10% are con- can, uh, can, can conceive. So remaining 10% are infertile or subfertile and who needs treatment. for infertility there are several factors which influences this infertility first is health there must be healthy spermatozoa which will be deposited in the vagina and spermatozoa changes in the like capacitation acrosome reactions and acquire the motility motile spermatozoa should ascend and on the female part Ovulation must be there, fallopian tubes patent, and oocyte pick up by the fimbria. Spermatozoa fertilizes the oocyte in the fimbria, in the ampullary region of the fimbria, and embryo reaches approximately in the endometrium by after fertilization, by uh, three to four days after fertilization. And endometrium should be receptive. by it is prepared by horm- several hormones like estrogen progesterone growth factor cytokines etc for the nidation of the embryo and next comes the implantation embryo is implanted in the uh, fertile endometrium and for the and, uh, for the continuation of pregnancy the earlier period we need adequate functioning of the corpus luteum which secretes hormones to for the maintenance of pregnancy at the earlier stage. Uh, uh, usually before puberty, we find uh, there is no pregnancy before puberty, after menopause, during pregnancy period, and during lactation period. Before puberty, uh, it's called, it may be a physiological infertility, where there is hormonal milieu changes, there is no egg to there is no egg to ovulate there is eggs but not going to the process of ovulation after menopause uh, there is uh, only few eggs to ovulate and to get pregnant and during pregnancy high level of hormones inhibits the follicular genesis in the ovum and so <clears throat> pregnancy is not possible and during lactation period if a person if a lay, if a mother lact, uh, lactates her baby breastfeeding only 5 to 6 times a day there is suppression of follicular genesis so it can give um, uh, contraception for about 6 months 6 or 7 or 8 months so these are the physiological infertility Uh, for the cause of infertility, since, um, since the, uh, this, is a, uh, this is not a one, uh, one person's disease, since it, it, it includes both male and female, so 
so uh, causes may lie on both male and female. Male cause may be 30 to 40 percent. Female cause uh, slightly bit, uh, slightly a bit higher, 40 to 55 percent, and both responsible for in 10 percent cases. In male fertility, first I come to male, infer male infertility. Since infertility uh, for our con context in our country, our social status, usually when a person is, uh, when a couple is infertile, only blame uh, falls on the ladies, or my, uh, my wife. It, why are not you, why aren't you getting pregnant? Why aren't you, you get pregnant? But uh, this uh, responsibility depends on both, both male and female. So I'll start with male, uh, male infertility. Common causes of male infertility are, there. we can divide them into pre-testicular, testicular, and post-testicular. There may be defect in the spermatogenesis. There may be in the testes. There may be obstruction in the duct system. Because we know after spermatogenesis in testes, the uh, it travels the motile sperms travel through the ducts, then it is uh, emit, emitted um, uh, emitted to the vagina. So if there is also failure in the uh, uh, deposition of the sperms in the vagina, it leads to infertility, or there may be some errors in the seminal fluid which hinders the passage of spermatozoa or, or which makes spermatozoa immotile. So these are the common causes of male infertility, pre-testicular, these are endocrine, gonadotrophin deficiency, obesity, thyroid dysfunction, hyperprolactinemia, and psychosexual like erectile dysfunction and impotence. Several drugs may affect the, uh, like anti-patient taking anti-hypertensive drug, anti-psychotic drug, which, which may hinder the spermatogenesis and leads to uh, infertility. There are some genetic causes like Klinefelter syndrome, Y chromosome microdeletions, or single gene mutation, which may affect the spermatogenesis and may cause infertility. And regarding the testicular, there is Cartagena syndrome where there is cilia, uh, cilia is uh, cilia deficiency of cilia or immotile cilia. So it hinders the uh, movement of spermatozoa. So it leads to infertility. It may be cryptorchidism. The testis may be undescended and may lead to, uh, and if testis remains undescended for several, uh, several years, the high temperature of the abdomen may uh, abdominal high temperature may hinder the spermatogenesis and may, may there may be azoospermia and maybe may make the may make them uh, male infertile in the childhood if there is mumps or there which may lead to orchitis or orchitis due to any other infection may hamper the spermatogenesis toxins like drugs smoking radiation chemotoxic drug, this may hinder the spermatogenesis. And most important is since we uh, patients are uh, now the chemotherapy, management of cancer patient is very good now. Uh, cancer survivors are now uh, demanding for, they are surviving a long period, so demands are their reproductive life. So we have to be careful giving them uh, any male person's chemotherapy or radiotherapy, which um, uh, which may hinder the spermatogenesis or which can damage the spermatogonian cell permanently. So before prescribing uh, radiation chemotherapy, the oncologist must uh, consider the fertil fertility uh, fertility potential of the male. Another important is varicocele. These are dilated vein, veins in the testes, which leads to higher temperature than uh, the normal testicular temperature. And so it can uh, inhibit the spermatogenesis. There are immunological factors like antibodies, which may destroy the sperm. And uh, certainly cell only syndrome, where there is no, no germ cell or no spermatogonium. So only certainly cells. So we, uh, where we will not get the sperms. 
and primary testicular failure, uh, where there is a high level of hormones like FSH, LH, and also there is no sperms or no spermatogonia in cells. And another is oligoesthenoteratozoospermia, spermia, where the sperms are um, uh, oligo less in number and also motility is deprived, and many sperms are seems to be morphologically also um, not good to for fertility for fertilization. And post testicular is obstructed obstruction of the efferent duct, vas deferens. Absence of vas deferens, there is cystic fibrosis, where there may be absence of vas deferens. And uh, acquired infection like tuberculosis, banoria may obstruct the, the um, uh, ducts, efferent ducts of the, uh, from the testes. There may be surgically uh, blockage of the test, blockage of the ducts like vasectomy, or there may be hernia raffi, vasectomy, etc. may hamper the ascent of the sperm, uh, passage of the sperm. And another important thing is when, when usually hernionaphy, other surgical operations occurs in the childhood, so patient cannot uh, re remember what uh, operation has been has done. So we have to, uh, sometimes they seek the, from their parents, they want to know from the parents what operation has undergone, so which may hinder the spermatogenesis uh, transport. Others are like ejaculatory failure, retrograde ejaculation, Retrograde ejaculation, where, where ejaculation goes to the emission occurs in the bladder. bladder. So here the sperms are collected from the urine and then used for uh, your treatment for infertility. There may be hypospadias, there may be bladder neck surgery. In hypospadias, the sperm is not deposited in the vagina, may come out easily from the vagina without ascending into the uterine cavity. So uh, the in percentage, if hypothalamic pituitary disorders responsible for male infertility about one to two percent, primary gonadal disorder or testicular failure is thirty to forty percent, sperm transport difficulties at ten to twenty percent, and in idiopathy we do not find out any cause in forty to fifty percent of the cases. In, uh, some congenital factors like undescended testes, same things which I have. The narrative and Cartagena syndrome, hypospadia, these are congenital factors affecting the male infertility. Thermal factor, usually we know scotal temperature is one to two degrees less than body temperature, but varicosal increases the temperature. Or if there is cryptorchidism, temp high temperatures affect the spermatogenesis. Infection like mumps or other, uh, any infection can affect the also, tuberculosis is also an important cause for affecting the uh, spermatogenesis. Endocrine like testicular failure, Kalman syndrome, where there is anosmia, hypothalamic cause, sertoli cell syndrome, genetic client finger, white chromosome microdivision, iatrogenic radiation, and the chemotherapy for other such cytotoxic drugs. Immunological factors like antibody against sperm, which is developed within the body of the male. And we discharge the sperms. In, um, so, in certain trauma of the testes or any surgery in the testes may lead to antibody uh, dissemination of the sperm, may lead to antibody formation in the body. Uh, same thing, obstruction of the ductus, like tuberculosis, gonococcal uh, infection, surgical trauma. Or an, an erectile dysfunction, failure to deposit sperm in the vagina. Ejaculatory defect may be premature, prematurely patient ejaculate, or it is retrograde, or there may be absence of ejaculation, hypospadias. Uh, and sperm, and there may be sperm abnormality, like sperm mobility may be less, or sperm morphology. There are certain per per percentage of sperm, uh, normal sperm, abnormal sperm, if four then, Four, uh, four per, more than 4% sperm morphology abnormal, chance of abnormal, chance of infertility is there. Seminal fluid is also important. It may be high volume, low volume, low fructose, high in prostaglandin, or very much viscous. Uh, female infertility. Uh, now I come to the female infertility, and causes are 
important causes are like ovulatory dysfunction, which is about 30 to 40 percent, tubal disease, 25 to 35 percent, uterine factors, 10 percent, cervical factors, 5 percent, pelvic endometriosis, 1 to 10 percent, and ovarian factors like uh, yeah, so ovarian factors is 30 to 40 percent. I think it's very much common now. And ovulation, oligo, oligo ovulation. In anovulation, uh, we found uh, we are now acquainted with the term polycystic ovary syndrome, where there is a anovulation or oligo ovulation with uh, obesity, heart hirsutism. This is now becoming very uh, common and becoming a uh, social factors because uh, the the ladies are becoming obese by uh, by their lifestyle. Uh, when the, the lifestyle are changes, they are taking more junk foods, sedentary habits, walking less, and becoming fatty, obesity, and which in turn leads to polycystic ovary syndrome, where the, there is a defect in ovulation, so infertility results. And there may be decrease in ovarian reserve, which may cause primary ovarian in, in failure or primary ovarian, premature ovarian insufficiency, where there is like less number of eggs. And there may be luteal phase defect. The corpus luteum is not um, uh, not properly uh, not properly functioning. Leads to less hormone, so fertilization and implantation is defective. And there are sometimes luteinized unruptured follicle where there is trapping of the eggs where it cannot be ruptured. We need some ovulation triggering trap for rupturing the for ovulation. These are the pictorial of uh, causes of ovulation, causes of female infertility, like pelvic factors like adhesions due to endometriosis, other hormones, and ovulatory factors like uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, and uterine factor, unfavorable endometrium, chronic endometritis with TB, or there may be t fibroid or tumor within the uterus or after TB infection, or any infection, post-abortal or peripheral infection, uterine wall may be adherent with each other, which is called uterine synecy, which is also a cause for female infertility. There may be congenital information in the uterus. Maybe double uterus, uh, biconvert uterus, septic uterus, etc. Regarding cervical factor, uh, cervical fact secretion may be too thick, Maybe due to chronic cervicitis or too thin or in it, so which causes ineffective sperm penetration. After cervical operation, like surgery in the cervix, like the father wheels operation, amputation of the cervix, or after laser or cryo surgery in the cervix, there may be some changes in the changes in the environment of the cervix, which may hinder the passage of sperm to the cervix. And there may be uh, tubal factors like tubal disease, most common is uh, in any pyogenic infection, chlamydia infection, gonococcal infection, and most important in this country is tuberculous infection. And uh, ovarian factors like anovulation, corpus luteum insufficiency, premature ovarian failure, resistant ovarian syndrome, where eggs cannot come out, some drugs are needed for the ovulation. Same things, tubal factor, chlamydia, TB infection, peritoneal factor, endometriosis, which was maybe hypoplastic or small. In, in, in that case, sometimes we give hormone, estrogen, progesterone cyclically for the growth of the uterus, development of the uterus. There may be fibroid, sinicia, sinicia cervical operation, sometimes done in case of uterus prolapse for the wheel separation or uh, here, the cervical situation will be scanty or excessive. There may be some vaginal factors like atresia, or there may be septum in the vagina, or there is maybe narrow intraches. Many patients, or many couples we found during counseling period, they come with, uh, you know, they didn't have successfully done the cotyleg because they do not know, uh, they do not know there may be a septum in the, uh, septum in the vagina. Since uh, for our educations, uh, many people do not know before marriage or, or regarding their genital tract or genital, external genitals, especially female. 
so whether they are successfully uh, can mate with husband they do not know so sometimes these factors come uh, for infertility and this is revealed during counseling with the couples and there may be some combined factors in male and female of most importance is age especially for female and also for male previously we used to say that above 35 years the quality and quantity of uh, eggs are deteriorated so chance of infertility gradually descends but uh, for male also after 45 years the quality of spermatozoa is a decrease quality of spermatozoa which also give, gives a factor for infertility so age is the most important factor again infrequent intercourse when uh, with age or they do not know the fatal which one is the fatal period and there may be some uh, and regarding fertile periods sometimes people are uh, husband are staying apart from wife maybe upset the dhaka or staying in other period he is coming trying for pregnancy but not in the fertile period maybe in other period he is coming and staying with the wife which is not giving her pregnancy so they should know during uh, counseling with the couple we will ask for whether they know the fertile period which fertile period which one is the fertile period you know, because um, lack of knowledge this no, this should be uh, <clears throat> this uh, knowledge should be given to the couple because the um, uh, for female there is only chance during fertile period now male do not have such a period that they will meet with wife this period for pregnancy no but only female has a fertile period so they should take the opportunity they during this period and sometimes aperonia dysperonia sometimes anxiety too much anxiety for uh, for the babies may hinders this sometimes they are using lubricants which may be toxic to the sperm and immunological factors both in male and female may have anti sperm antibodies in female may destroy the sperm so when we will start the investigation when a couple comes after marrying for 7 days usually they do not come after 7 days after trying for few several years they used to come in our country but suppose uh, they come after uh, one month two month when we should, should we start for investigating a couple if a couple is of actual age not more than 35 and good doing good everything is good then they will come after taking one year of chance one year of trying for pregnancy they will come for investigation but if they feel that i want to know whether i am uh, totally fit or not if they come we should go for investigation this is their right they come they came to us to know whether they are they are physically fit for carrying pregnancy then we will go for investigation but usually after marriage one year of taking full opportunity for for pregnancy that if not pregnant they will come for investigate they will come to us so we will try to we will start for investigation and another thing if the age is more like more than 6 35 years more than 37 40 years then we will start immediately for above 35 years we can wait for 6 months or if more than uh, more than 35 years more then we will start we can start doing investigation immediately whether they are fit or not since chance of getting pregnant is det- uh, decline so we will do the um, steps as early as possible and uh, first and first uh, first test most in, most common and most simple test is a semen analysis which is for male male partner this is non invasive most simple test so if a couple comes the first test if anyone says you what which will be your first test to do this is the semen analysis then we test for the male couple and there are some um, pre- uh, prerequisite for semen analysis like uh, abstinence like uh, get, getting collection better if they collect the semen on the clinic not um, borrowing the semen from the you know, house 
and sometimes there, there will be traffic there and more time is taken. So better they will give the semen collection in the clinic or in the city where diagnosis is done there. And next come the ovulation test. Ovulation test is the for the female, whether he, she is ovulating, uh, ovulating regularly or not. It is very uh, simple. If we can ask a question to a woman, whether your period or menstruation is regular, you are going, you are, uh, occurring every, every one after one month. So this is a simple test for understanding the oh, the lady is ovulating properly at least once a month. And another is table potency test. So the most uh, common tests are uh, semen analysis, ovulation test for female, there are also few tests for ovulation and also tubal potency tests the tubes are open and not. There are several tests now, simple tests for tubal potency. I will tell you later on. And now what, how we approach for investigation? If a couple come or if only one um, wife or husband comes, we will prefer to consult with them um, in a in a sitting where both couples, both of the couples come. Better wives and husband, they will come together. We'll talk with them. First, we will uh, listen to the, the, their um, listen to their problems, and then we counsel. We'll get the uh, so we'll throw some questions. They will give the answer, and if needed, we'll uh, discuss separately also. But first, it is better both husband wives come together. We'll talk with them. And regarding uh, and within infertility, we have to take uh, the history of male and female separately in a separate sheet because we have to give importance both male and female because infertility is not related to only male, only female. This is not the single disease for male or female. Since it involves both couples, so we should uh, keep uh, we should keep two separate files or folder for both husband and also for wife. So in case of male, we in the history will consider the age, duration of marriage, as long as duration of marriage and the patient is infertile, it must be, it may be difficult. And also whether they, whether he was using any contraceptive, maybe their um, uh, duration of marriage is six years, but they're using the contraceptive for the last five years. So only they are trying for one year. So, but uh, so we'll have to take the history of contraceptives and history of previous marriage. If it is a second marriage, third marriage, we ask them whether you have any child or children with the previous marriage. This is a proof, one of the proof for her male fertility. And regarding the sexual history, whether he can stay with the wife properly, and whether it's an, uh, whether the patient is suffering from it. We suspect any genetic cause or other hormonal cause suffering from anosmia or not. In the general medical history, sexually, whether she had any sexually transmitted disease. So area where he stays is also important. And sometimes in border area or some areas, there is uh, more sexually transmitted disease. So which may lead to orchitis or duct obstruction. Whether he had suffered from mums, in the childhood orchitis or patient is having diabetes. In diabetes, the quality of sperm is not deteriorated, but the uh, patient may dif find difficulty in, uh, there may be ejaculatory deficiency or difficulties, which may lead to infertility. So whether diabetes is well controlled and also whether the she had, uh, he has any chest infection like TB and first surgery is very important. Because I told that in the usually it was done in the childhood, patient cannot remember anything, so he has to ask his parents what operation I have undergone. So during examination, one should look for scar in the region of the hernia or any operation in the testis. In the childhood, there may be a torsion of the testis, which may lead to her orchidectomy. But patient might not know about that whether she has got whether he got any chemotaxi or chemo chemotoxic toxic drug or radiation due to some malignancies or there may be erectile dysfunction or like social habits like smoking directly hampers the sperm motility which makes sperm and asthenum. 
So this uh, we, we ask for smoking, alcohol, or other social habits, whether he is he is practicing or not. During examination of the uh, male, a uh, male, we go for BMI. If there should be a appropriate BMI, excessive obesity is an hindrance for sperm sperm, sperm infertility. Whether he has excessive hair growth, gynecomastia, and genitalia should be examined. And usually in our country, we keep one. Usually it should be done by infertility specialist. But in our in our country, due to some social issue, we keep one male or male male doctor or we send to urologist or someone to, who, or any medicine um, male doctor to examine the genitalia. Examine the genitalia whether there is any hypospadias or not, testicular size, consistency, volume by orthodermeter, or there is any varicocele. Varicocele. Then we go for. Uh, after examination, we go for some investigation for the male partner. Am I clear to all? Salim bhai? Am I audible and clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma you are audible and clear. Yes. Yes, yes. you are audible and clear. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so now we go for routine investigation in the male. In the mail, we do the semen analysis. We follow the WHO 20, uh, which was given in 20110. But now, after in uh, after pandemic, they gave a new uh, semen analysis, which is not so much a uh, change. So we follow the WHO criteria for semen analysis. The, uh, most I, I told most important, most simple test is a semen analysis. We can gather a uh, um, variety of knowledge from semen analysis. Sperm count, motility, morphology, uh, seminal volume, whether fructose or other ingredients were present or not from the single semen analysis test. Usually, if there is any, usually there should be two to three days abstinence or three to four days in abstinence, and uh, he will give, she will, he will give by masturbation better. If not, uh, wife may be, uh, help uh, him to forgiving semen. semen and then in a white board collection pot and better in the uh, where the investigation will be done, he will give semen there. There will be a separate good room for, uh, for, giving, for giving semen. And there should be an assistant if he could not understand, if he is unable to understand, uh, assistant will help, male assistants will help to give him semen collection. And if they are usually, uh, after four weeks, another will be done to give a correct result. But you know, sometimes in this context, sometimes they come from very uh, remote area, like from the southern part of Bangladesh coming to our clinic. So in that case, we if one or two day gap, we collect the semen and we say that if it is not normal, we'll do it again after seven days, you come with, uh, after good preparation. And then if there is any, uh, like uh, uh, not in all patients, we do the hormone test. If there is azospermia or, or severe oligospermia, then we do the hormones like follicle stimulating hormone, LH, testosterone, prolactin. And in the seminal fluid, fructose is run. If there is absence of fructose, we may suspect for uh, obstruction in the back system on testicular biopsy. Usually, FNAC is done. Usually, most common is FNAC done to see whether there is any spermatogenesis or not. After FNAC, uh, FNAC, FNAC other tests are uh, present to, to um, get the sperm from the testes, to collect the sperm from the testes. Now, one ultrasonogram is transrectal ultrasonogram. Ultrasonogram is done to see whether there is uh, seminal vesicles, prostate, these glands, ductal systems are proper or not. Uh, then, in some cases, we do the uh, karyotyping, like client filter syndrome, where we get the XXY, or Y chromosome microdeletion, where there is oligospermia or azospermia. These are the genetic tests, and it is expensive, but still, in some cases, it is few cases, it is needed. One important th 
thing thing is in Klein-Felter syndrome, there is still uh, there is some mosaicism in Klein-Felter syndrome. So we can get the sperm by uh, taking sperm from the we can retrieve the sperms from the testes and we can fertilize it by ICSI. And so he can be a, a father of a Klein-Felter syndrome can uh, can can father a child. And immunological tests like anti serum anti immuno, antibodies in the serum of the male partner we can do this and we can detect the antibodies and there will be some infection in the semen uh, so we have to give her proper antibiotic for a long time like doxycycline or ciprofloxacin quinolon derivative this is the who criteria for semen analysis where volume is 1.5 lower limit and pH 7.2 to 7.8, sperm concentration, it is lower limit of 15 million. And total sperm count, 39 million per ejaculate. Motility is now, uh, progressive motility 32%. Morphology 4%. So viability 58%. This is the uh, WHO criteria for sperm analysis, semen analysis. Regarding female infertility, uh, now female, we have to, we will keep separate history sheets, separate folder for them, for the female also. And in the history, we take the age. Age is very important as age advances, chances of quality of the egg deteriorates as well as the number of quantity of egg is also deteriorates. So it's difficult to make her pregnant if she is an older lady. So we have to take other measures of assisted reproductive technology for aged patient. So duration of marriage is important. As long as the duration, there must be a pathology. Uh, so we have to sort for any other pathology. Similarly, if she married for the second time, third time, we ask for whether she had any children with the first or second husband. And regarding general medical history, diabetes, diabetes gives a uh, uh, the whole body is affected by the diabetes mellitus if not well controlled and tuberculosis tuber and di for diabetes if not controlled properly there is chance of more abortion more congenital anomaly of the features so it should be co controlled every if any diabetic patient we control with special since we are infertility specialist so we send the patient to the endocrinologist to, for the proper control of that sometimes they take, they take times say that after one month or two months you will try for uh, after controlling the blood sugar level they will go for uh, infertility treatment tuberculosis is a very notorious drug it affects the tubes endometrium everything so tuberculosis is a um, uh, silent disease sometimes it is not uh, properly diagnosed properly treated so and uh, surprisingly is after diagnosis tuberculosis, when treatment starts, patient get pregnant within the period of treatment. So if it is uh, tuberculosis, we have to send the patient to the specialist, they prescribe the anti-tuberculous drug, then, then uh, we wait for some time for, it, for the treatment. STD, PID, this should be yeah, pelvic inflammatory disease, sexually transmitted disease, they should be evaluated and treated properly. And also surgical history is very, very important for surgery in the lower abdomen, abdomen, pelvic surgery. Any abdominal surgery may lead to sulfingitis, infection in the tube, which may obstruct the both tubes and may lead to infertility. And also any pelvic surgery. Usually, sometimes people cannot, the female cannot say what operation she has gone to. Maybe in the fibroid, maybe in the ovary, ovarian cysts, one ovary may be removed, but um, she cannot uh, give us proper papers. So sometimes we have to ask the parents or we have to see or look for what happened in the ultrasonogram. Sometimes one ovary is not found. So in that case, we imagine oh, she might have been, she might have undergone ovarian cystectomy or any operation operations. So surgical history is very, very important. And now can the menstrual history, in the menstrual history, regular menstrual cycle is a very important indication for ovulation, whether it is occurring every monthly, so we can presume that she is ovulating properly at the mid-cycle. And whether she had 
Another important is uh, some patient with polycystic ovarian syndrome, patient come say our menstrual cycle is irregular. I'm menstruating every two to three months or even six months. Now uh, one year I'm not menstruating or I'm MNRA. Then we and then we do the other examination, whether hirsutism, whether she is obesity, any signs of an anovulation, and we then look for what is the cause of anovulation and uh, uh, amenorrhea, etc. It may be FSH amenorrhea, maybe patient may be premature ovarian failure, where there is high FSH LH, or uh, or she might have uh, FSH LH level altered when we test in the day two day two um, day two day of the cycle when you do the hormones FSHLA, this may be altered which is a sign of polycystic ovary syndrome or FSH high in primary ovary and failure and sometimes uh, the, uh, it may be normal, hormones may be normal but if the cause may be in the endometrium, endometrium may be uh, destroyed by the endometritis so uh, we have to take the menstrual history very very meticulously meticulously and regarding obstetrical history, whether number of pregnancies, whether there were any preg complications in pregnancies like puerperial sepsis, puerperial uh, postpartum hemorrhage, which may, let, uh, may, uh, may destroy her endometrium, so lead to uh, infertility. And also uterine uh, sinusitis, whether patient, if there is an abortion or uh, placenta, retained placenta, whether there was any intervention in the uterus, like in abortion, if we do excessive curated, we may uh, remove the basal layer of the endometrium. So uterine layers may be sinicky or loss of endometrium. So the patient is not getting pregnant properly. So we, we, we take the history, whether uh, there is any abortion, puerperial sepsis, when the last abortion was occurred, or last pregnancy, whether there is what diabetes or DDM or hypertension, puerperal sepsis, eclampsia during last pregnancy. And also contraceptive history is also important because patient may be taking a pill for several, uh, contraceptive, oral contraceptive pill for several years or injectable contraceptive, which may make her amenorrhea and there may be amenorrhea, this is called post-pill amenorrhea. Difficult to treat, difficult to make her menstruate, but uh, this, this may be the result of taking uh, contraceptive pill or injections for a long time. So we have to take the contraceptive history. Um, regarding sexual problem like dyspareunia, dyspareunia, deep, dyspare, deep dyspareunia may be due to endometriosis or other pelvic inflammatory disease, but there may be loss of libido. Patient, uh, male or female, both may not, uh, not feeling uh, for sexual act. And examination, like in examination, we have to take the BMI or weight of the patient. If the weight should be optimum, if it is uh, severe, obese, or too less, less weight, so uh, she should acquire weight or decrease weight accordingly. And whether there is a on a look examination, hirsutism is present, which may indicate hyperandrogenism in polycystic ovary syndrome or in any adrenal tum adrenal tumor or ovary um, virilizing tumor of the ovary where there is excessive androgens in the body, so which may lead to hirsutism or excessive hair in the body. So we will in the examination we look for that. And secondary sexual characters also. Also, patient may complain of galactoria. Galactoria, in which case there is, um, uh, we, if we do the investigation, like prolactin, prolactin may be high, then we will have to look for what is the cause of prolactin, high prolactin level, whether there is any prolactinemia, any tumor in the prolactin uh, in the secreting gland, like anterior pituitary or or what they call or taking any drugs which raises her prolactin level. This is very important. Patient taking psychotic drugs, which increases the prolactin level in the uh, body, and so it in, uh, inhibits follicle, folliculogenesis or FSH hormone, which may lead to infertility. And whether patient has any systemic uh, like hypertension, cardiac or renal cause, or thyroid status. In every patient in examination, we do the thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone is very important for 
for instance, for making the patient fertile or keeping a patient normal. If they are in a cardiac patient, in cardiac patient, we all, always send them to cardiologist whether she can carry the pregnancy or not. In renal disease also, we send them to the nephrologist whether she is fit to take the baby. Because after getting pregnant, if cardiologist say, oh, say Yo, you cannot take because you're, you have cardiomyopathy or you have severe problem in the heart, so it's very uh, traumatizing for the patient. So we we'll, we want to uh, investigate every aspect if there is any problem before starting any treatment for the patient. Then we go for examination for female partner. Uh, we go for per, uh, per, um, per abdominal examination. We look for whether there is abdomen is whether she is obese or not. Whether there is any swelling in the abdomen. Uh, regarding the pattern of the hair in the abdomen. Also, there is any swelling, swelling, maybe uterine swelling, maybe ovarian swelling. We look for that, a tube ovarian swelling, whether she has any tumor or not. And um, then we came for gynecological, a local examination. First, we give the speculum, per speculum with casco speculum. We see the uh, external genitalia. <coughs> Perspicular examination <coughs> uh, to see whether the cervix is healthy or not. Then, per vaginal examination by, by manually, we see the cer <coughs> cervix, uh, feeling the cervix, whether uterus is antiverted or retroverted, or there is any, uh, see the mobile mov size of the uterus, mobility of the uterus. We see the admixer. Whether admixa is free or not, whether there is feeling like thick or there is any tumor in the admixture. So, gynecological examination is very important. We go first with per speculum, then per vaginal examination. Then we go for uh, investigations. Investigation like uh, first we do the diagnosis of port ovulation. We, we told you that uh, for the ovulation, test for ovulation, the history is the regular menstrual cycle. If a lady says her menstrual cycle is regular, we take about 80% that she is uh, ovulating regularly. 80% that is correct that she is ovulating regularly. So my, not an ovulation or no, any no problem with ovulation. And for, uh, for ovulation, uh, there was a temperature thermometer, basal body temperature thermometer, BBT thermometer, which gives the temp which usually gives the temperature at the time of ovulation. Usually at the time of ovulation, um, yeah, we in the thermometer, if we take the temperature from day 10 to day 14 of the cycle, we see the there is a biphasic temperature. First, there is a drop of temperature, then a rise of temperature from the one, I think, point one two point five uh, degree Fahrenheit. So, the uh, if we can detect meticulously, can uh, can detect the uh, BBT basal temperature rise due to ovulation by the since progesterone is thermogenic, so there is a rise of temperature, which may indicate that ovulation has occurred. But uh, it's very difficult to detect, and now BBT the thermometer is rarely used. And cervical mucus tests are the same. The, there is a fawning pattern in the cervical mucus. If we test the cervical mucus in the slides, we found fawning pattern pre ovulatory. And absence of fawning is post after, uh, after ovulation occurs, absence of fawning, so in, which indicates the patient is ovulating properly. And vaginal cytology, also taking vaginal scrap and examination under uh, microscope can see the pattern of the cell, epithelial cell, and we can predict whether the patient is ovulating or not. And now, most important, usually cervical mucus, vaginal cytology, BBT are now obsolete. We do the hormone test at the 20 day 21. If it is more than 
six or more than 10 progesterone level, we can assume the patient is ovulating. And also there is an LH kit like pregnancy uh, test in the urine. We can see from if we can do from 10 to 12 days, 20, 20 days, every one alternate day or every day, we can see the positive LH kit, uh, positive test, which indicates LH surge. And LH surge follow, is followed by ovulation. And endometrial biopsy, we, we uh, during BNC, if we can do in the right time, uh, after 21 days, then we'll find the secretory phase. First uh, secretory phase, then we see histopathological test, we see the secretory phase of the endometrial. First change is the subnuclear vacuolation, early secretory phase. And then we found the secretory phase in the histopathological report which indicates patient is ovulating properly and uh, uh, properly ovulating properly. And if the test is uh, in the follicular, if the histopathology shows no secretory phase, that means the patient is not ovulating, maybe an ovulation. And now most important is sonography examination of the tracking the follicles and finding the uh, finding the corpus luteum, which indicates the ovulation. Most important, most simple is now we do the transvaginal ultrasonogram. We give the ovulation inducing drug. Then we do the folliculometry to see the size of the uh, follicles in the ovary. If it is 16 to 18 millimeter, corresponding with the pre-ovulatory endometrium in the uterus. So we can predict that she is going to uh, ovulate one or two days later. Then we give the ovulation trigger drug for ovulation. Or sometimes we again do the ultrasonogram after two or three days, we found the corpus luteum, which indicates the patient is ovulating. And the direct test for ovulation is to see the corpus luteum is by laparoscopy while examination. While doing investigation like laparoscopy, we can see the uh, follicle rupturing or corpus luteum in the ovary, which is a direct test for ovulation. Then we go for tubal insufflation tests. Tubal insufflation tests. Uh, uh, tubal insufflation test to see the patency of the tubes. Previously, we used to do the um, uh, routine cycling wounds uh, tubal insufflation test. Patient under general anesthesia, we test the, test the sound of the hissing sound of passage of the air to the tubes and. Uh, so we can predict the patient's uh, tube is patent. Now we are doing the, we are taking the radiological help like hysterosalphingography, giving dye to the tubes, due to the cervix, giving dye to the um, uh, cervix, and, and then we, uh, the, radiologi the radiologists observe the passage of dye to the uterus, to the tubes, and spillage of dye in the peritoneal cavity, which indicates the tubes are patent. This is a fluoroscopy screening usually done by the radiologist, so they can tell us, or they can give us the report, and they can also give us document like film. So uh, we gynecologists, so we infertility specialists see the uh, film and also the reports of the radiologist. But saline infusion sonography, this can be done by the sonologist or radiologist who is. Um, also, who is also doing sonology, and we give uh, saline infusion sonography is a less invasive, not traumatic, and very simple test where we give saline, saline water uh, to the cervix with a small catheter, baby catheter, follis catheter. We we give saline and we see the endometrial cavity as well as passage of the water saline to the tube and also spillage of saline in the pouch of Douglas. Sometimes. Tubes are not properly uh, located, like or block is not properly located by as by so we see by hysterosalphingography, but it is um, so we, um, the presence of fluid in the pouch of Douglas indicates that the tubes are open. This is called saline infusion sonography. It is now becoming popular. It is less intensive, less invasive, and also economic and also less traumatic. For the patient also, because every patient after history sanctification came to us with severe pain, there may be chemical peritonitis or some peritonitis. Well, so we prefer for um, saline infusion sonography for tubal test. 
and during lap laparoscopy investigation, we can go for laparoscopic chromopartization where we give uh, mercury uh, injection to the dye to the uh, cervix, and we can directly see the passage of the dye in the peritoneal cavity. So it's a direct test, most uh, most uh, correct test for seeing the tubal potency. But there are hysteroscopic examination through which phalloposcopy wire may be passed to the tube, and and we can see and any any and we can see the potency of the tube or any obstruction of the tube can be seen by hysteroscopy and phalloposcopy. And uh, for female, we do the endocrine test like. Most important thyroid test, we must do the thyroid test. We then do the uh, follicle stimulating hormone. Other, uh, if it is hyperandrogenism, we do the uh, issue of FSH LH and day two of the cycle. And also we have the endosterone sulfate, testosterone, progesterone in mid cycle level, we do the test. And now uh, anti-mullerian hormone is also uh, tested for to see the ovarian result. And some immunological tests like anti serum antibodies are done to see any immunological factor in female for infertility. Now come the infertility treatment. Number one is counseling. Nothing is more than counseling. So counseling, counseling, counseling. Talk, talk with the patient, talk with the couple to see any difficulties during their, uh, in their conjugal life. Sometimes the husband is uh, usually in our country, the husbands are staying abroad. So we have to look, uh, come for one or two months, three months. So very difficult. They want pregnancy by these three months. So very difficult. And if they, if husband comes for three months, they usually try for two months. They, they, they usually try for themselves. Three, two months, they come on the last month. So it's very to, difficult to investigate, to get the fertile period. To give the proper treatment. So our advice to the patient is: before your husband comes, you come one month, one month before your husband comes to you from abroad. So we can prepare you, we can investigate you, and if possible, you bring the reports of your husband, or we give some press investigation. They can do there abroad, and they come with. So our works are uh, are shorter, so we can give them treatment properly. So for three or four months, they can properly use this time for infertility treatment. And psychological support, because uh, psychological support is very important. Sometimes the husband is blaming wife, wife blaming husband, and the whole, the, so whole family is blaming the wife for the infertility. But we have to counsel them. Infertility is not, not problem with only one, only husband or only wife. It, might, it may be problem with the both. So they should understand that. And sometimes the husband comes and the in-laws uh, insist them to get, in, get married again and again for children. But this should be, uh, so counseling is very important with the couple, with the in-laws, if couple is not present with the parents of the lady, if uh, husband is not there. And we'll, uh, next we'll make the, in the treatment, uh, will make the, uh, we see the BMI, whether BMI is uh, around 19, within 19 to 25 for both, whether uh, there is any habits of smoking or alcohol. Smoking is very common with the males and in our country also. And whether we'll, uh, if they uh, we'll ad we advise them to avoid smoking and avoid uh, indulgence in alcohol or other social habitats, or she, she or he is taking any drugs, which may hinder the uh, fertility, especially the psychological drugs, this increases the prolactin level, make the patient infertile, make the female infertile. There is no follicular genesis then. And also we look for any cortical problem, whether they know the fertile period or not, whether they are, uh, whether sperms are actually they are deposited in the vagina or not, or the patient might have septum. May, may not penetration may not occurring properly. This may be a problem. If um, so, they should talk uh, to us um, separately or both couple uh, simultaneously regarding any cortical problem. Or uh, the male may have erectile problem or very much tension, anxiety may uh, lead to erectile problem. 
or any drug. In the management of hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, where the hormone levels are less, then we can uh, we can do ovulation by giving her follicle stimulating hormone for follicular genesis. And then when the size of follicle is enough, about 16 to 18 millimeter, which is determined by transvaginal ultrasonogram in female. So in that time, we can give her the ovulation triggering drug, injection HCG. Injection HCG. And this is the, if patient is a lack in hormone like FSH, LH from the, due to hypogonadotropic, from the hypothalamus hormone for less, so we can give her injection follicle stimulating hormone and injection HCG, or there are, there are different varieties of follicle stimulating gonadotrophins, uh, purified, highly purified, and um, these recombinant drugs. And in hyperprolactinemia, uh, usually the drug quivergolin is given, but if the prolactin level is too high, then we, well, we have to give, uh, we have to send to endocrinologists for other investigation for prolactinemias or any tumor in the pituitary gland, which might need uh, treatment, proper treatment. And for hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, where if you see level is very high, where there is primary ovarian failure or primary testicular failure, but there is no egg in the testes, uh, no sperm in the testes or no egg in the ovaries. In that case, difficult to make her, um, make her uh, fertile. In that case, we can uh, counsel her for any adoption or where donor is uh, available, they can take donor for, donor for egg or donor for any sperm. And then uh, for follicle, uh, for ovulation inducing drugs, we have several drugs. We are familiar with the chromifin citrate or ovulate or chromifin citrate drug, which increases the FSHLH level and causes ovulation. First fertility drug we give is chromifin citrate usually. And if patient has uh, if patient has um, antibodies like antiserum and antibodies in her body. The lady also we can overcome this by intrauterine insemination. In intrauterine insemination, we are inseminating husband's prepared serum, semen, and giving bypassing the cervix, we, we are placing the sperm in the uterine cavity. So usually the antibodies uh, in the female remains in the cervix, which kills the sperm. So we bypassing the cervix, we are giving the semen serum in the uterine cavity. So for where there is antibodies against the sperm, <coughs> sorry, it will be anti-sperm antibodies. So IUI is a better treatment. <coughs> if there is infection, like in semen infection or infection in the body PID, we will give proper antibiotic for long time antibiotic for chlamydia or any antibiotic biogenic infection or if she's uh, in tuberculosis, tuberculosis should be treated. For retrograde ejaculation, <coughs> semen is collected from, sperm is collected from the urine and this sperm can be alkaline urine. We make the urine alkaline first, then we ask them to uh, um, ejaculate, then we collect the sperm from bladder from urine. This, this form can be used for IUI, intrauterine insemination, or in ART, assisted reproductive technology. In ICSI, we can use this sperm. Or for genetic abnormalities, uh, like client filter syndrome, where there is no air, we can use the, if, if her family religion permits, you can use the donor sperm, or they can take, this is better choice, they can take adoption. Uh, in surgical management of obstructive azospermia, in surgical management of obstructive azospermia, uh, where there is a, uh, obstruction in the ducts, the operation in the, uh, uh, an osteomotic operation can be done in the ducts by the urologist uh, on uh, making the uh, ducts open in, and it's a lifelong treatment so she can he can pass the sperm in the semen or if an astromatic operation is not possible we can retrieve the sperm from the testes and this sperm can be used for assisted reproductive technology in ICSI 
or if there is varicocele, varicocele hampering the spermatogenesis by the raising the temperature. So spermatogenesis is hampered. So we can, uh, this can be also, this operation can also be done by the urologist. And so temperature can be reduced in the testes. And if there is a cryptorchidism, a testis is not located in the proper position in the scrotum, this testis can be made downward uh, to the proper place at a two to three years of age by the drugs or by surgery. Or in impotency, we can, uh, we can uh, give her psychosexual treatment, psychological drug, or send the patient to a psychologist and for treatment. And in hyperprolactinemia, cabercolin or other drugs, treatment can be given. Erectile dysfunction, sildenafil or tadalafil can be given. And, and the next option of treatment is IUI. If we take the help of assisted reproductive technology, intrauterine insemination can be done, whether in severe oligospermia or in teratosospermia or whether in sperm cell model, we can take the help of IUI. And uh, where the in obstructive azospermia, we can retrieve the sperm from testis, testicular uh, sperm extraction, or um, percutaneous epididymal sperm extraction, or microscopically sperm extraction. We can do this, extract the sperm, and can go for assisted reproductive technology like ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. It is uh, ICSI is a uh, uh, revolutional treatment for male infertility uh, with severe oligosospermia, obstructive azospermia. We can, uh, the ICSI is a revolutionary treatment where many male partner now fathers by ICSI treatment. Or, uh, <clears throat> I have only 20 minutes, no? Selim Bhai? Yes. Okay. So, in case of female infertility, treatment is a uh, there are modalities of treatment, and the treatment should be focused on the pathology. But um, if the the problem is ovulatory or problem is tubal or the endometriosis, or um, the treatment will be focused on the pathology, or it may be uterovaginal canal, or patient might need ART or ovulatory enovulation. General psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is given in case of if patients are taking drugs, taking drugs for psychological cases, we have to look for weight maintenance is very important because uh, obesity, PCOS directly, indirectly hampers the infertility. And also we use the drugs, clomiphene citrate, letrozole, and give the uh, give the ovulation inducing drug like Injection HMG, FSH, HCG, there are different types of gonadotrophins, isodric, um, purified, non purified, um, menopausal gonadotrophin, purified, highly purified, recombinant gonadotrophins are used for as a, as a ovulation inducing drugs. First, we use, we give, first usually we give the clomiphene citrate, if fails, then letrozole, aromatase inhibitors, but in case of PCO, you usually, we usually start with letrozole, and then stepwise, if we have if we have time, then we can give her first three or six cycles of clomiphene citrate. After six cycles, we give a pause for two or three months. And we told them to try for yourself, try naturally, and only we give them the idea of fertile period, and then we give them. Uh, after CC or letrozole, if not pregnant, then we gradually give the gonadotrophins like FSH and also ovulation triggering like HCG. But once we started with the ovulatory inducing drug injections, we must follow to the folliculometry. For ovulation inducing drugs, oral drugs, we can uh, do the ultrasonogram one or twice for folliculometry. But if we give them gonadotrophin drugs like injection HMD, injection FSH, we must do the ultrasonogram at least once in the mid-cycle to see the size of the follicle. And most important is to prevent the ovarian hyperstimulation, which is the which is one of the complications of the ART or treatment of infertility. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which may be a life-threatening problem. And we should, so before, while giving uh, injectable Gonadotrophins or ovulation inducing drugs injectable, 
we must follow by the ultrasonogram to see the response of the ovary to the drugs. It may be hyper-responsive or hyper-responsive. In polycystic ovary syndrome, we found the ovaries are hyper-respond, hyper-responding. So, so in that case, we have to curtail the drug or we have to give them uh, prevention drug uh, prevention drug to prevent the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Another is in polycystic ovary syndrome. Another is to see the ovarian desire. We do the antimodarian hormone test. If AMH is high, they also, they, they are, uh, if very high, they are suspected to be ovarian hyperstimulation. And also we give metformin in polycystic ovary syndrome in hyperinsulinemia. In hyperprolactinemia, we give the drugs like gomokiprin, kebargolin. If patient is hypothyroidism, we have to correct the thyroid status. <coughs> <clears throat> by thyroxine in diabetes, anti-diabetes drug is needed in PCOS weight reduction. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Monitoring during ovulation in Delson drug is essential with transvaginal for ultrasonica. So in every ART clinic or infertility specialist, she might be acquainted with the, or she might practice the transvaginal ultrasonogram to see the uh, follicular genesis. And in the surgical treatment of infertility, we can do the uh, uh, laparoscopic ovarian drilling in PCO. In resistant cases, we, we can go for over uh, cystic uh, <coughs> Cauterization, polycystic ovary cauterization with the uh, coagulation during laparoscopy or laser vaporization. Usually, uh, only four four pairs is given for the follicles. And also, previously we have to practice. We used to practice wedge resection of the ovaries because in PCO ovarian uh, volume is very large. So in that case, wedge resection was done in the ovaries to reduce the size of the ovaries and to reduce the hormone level. In prolactinomas, first we give the kibergolin, bromokiprin, then if needed, endocrinologist suggests for other investigation and proper treatment for any tumor of the pituitary gland. And for virulizing tumor like adrenal gland or in the adrenal gland, if there is virulizing tumor or virulizing tumor on the ovaries, I think sir, these are removed by surgery. And for any uterovaginal abnormality like septum, transverse septum, longitudinal septum, or imperforated hymen, surgery, surgical need is needed in uterus. If there is septic uterus or bicornate uterus, metroplasty, and other operations are done by maybe by the hysteroscopy or by the uh, by opening the abdomen or any fibroid tumor, submucous fibroid, it is removed or excessive size of the fibroid or any ovarian tumor. Where yeah, we, which is uh, hampering the infertility, it should be removed. And the, there is also scope of bariatric surgery where the there is excessive weight, excessive fat in the body. Bariatric surgery may be helpful. For tuberculinal factor peritubal additions, these are removed by laparoscopy or by laparotomy. For any tubal block which is detected by the hysteroscopy and uh, treatment can be given by hysteroscopy. If embryoplasty can be done, tubal tubal anastomosis in tubal block can be done. But tubal, uh, um, uh, if we can make canal open by tubal anastomosis, this is a lifelong uh, giving uh, you know, potential for fertility for the patient. Then, but nowadays, since in, uh, the IVF, these are coming so becoming popular so for any tubal pathology we we go for many many prescribe for or many give counsel done counseling for in for art or ivf treatment in vitro fertilization treatment because after tubal surgery there is chance of ectopic pregnancy also we also counsel the patient during tubal operation we also counsel the patient pros and cons of the surgery with how long it will remain open or it's a lifelong, whether there is chance of any uh, complication after tubal operation or not, or in case of hydrosalpins, we have to clip the, there is where there is um, the physiology of the tube is lost and there is collection of fluid in the tubes. So in that case, either we have to remove the tube 
or we clip the corneal end of the tube before going to any ART procedure. In endometriosis, if it is mild to moderate, we can give the ovulation inducing drugs or uh, even IUI after uh, looking for the potency of the tubes. But in case of severe cases of endometriosis, where there is chocolate seed, severe cases, grade three or four endometriosis, in that case, we have to go for in vitro fertilization treatment or ART treatment. And for cervical factors, we can go for IUI or in, uh, or if not, uh, if several, uh, if highways fail several times, then we can go for in vitro fertilization. And other immunological causes like sperm, anti sperm antibodies, we can give the steroid treatment to the female partner. Even to the male partner, we can give the steroids. And the final treatment is intrauterine IUI or IVF. Uterovaginal surgery like myomectomy, metroplasty, additional lysis in vaginal stenosis, one operation is phantoms operation where the vaginal introitus is uh, opened up and uh, by phantom operation, we, this can be, uh, this will keep open lifelong. And for endometrial polyp, uh, hysteroscopic polypectomy is done. And bariatric surgery, I believe if BMI is more than 35 kg per square meter, so she is advised by bariatric surgery. Is, uh, we don't find it very help, not very helpful, because if the patient is on the same lifestyle, taking sudden taking junk food, fatty food, and again uh, sedentary habits, uh, then again she become he or she become fat, fatty. So uh, it should be her moral courage, moral strength. So he will be thin. He will not take this. He will walk. After bariatric surgery, he, he or she have to maintain strictly, follow the uh, strictly the lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. And after that, we found that uh, even after all investigation, we do not found uh, 10 to 30 percent cases. We do not found any cause, and we call them unexplained infertility. But the treatment protocols are like we'll give the ovulation induction drugs for three to six months. After six months, three months wait, she will wait for three months. Then we will give her injectable drug for ovulation induction, maybe three or six months. Then we will wait, then we'll go for IUI, IUI for three or even so maximum six cycle. If IUI fails, then we'll tell her for in vitro fertilization in case of unexplained infertility. But in some cases like European countries in unexplained infertility, the first goes for IUI three or four cycle. Then they go for IVF. And in IUI at all, we bypass the endocervical canal and deposit good motile sperm close to the fallopian tubes. And we have IVF in ART or assisted reproductive technology. We have in vitro fertilization, where fertilization is done outside the body. Usually, fertilization occurs normally in the ampulla of the fallopian tube, where sperm essence and uh, eggs are. Uh, picked up by the fimbria and fertilization occur at the ampulla. So it is within the body fertilization, but in in vitro fertilization, fertilization occur in the lab, laboratory. Fertilization occur in the laboratory where eggs are collected from the given stimulating drug to the female. So eggs are collected from the ovaries, only invasive procedure of ovary, uh, of egg pickup. Of ovarium, uh, egg pickup is uh, uh, by uh, just to like the small operation under anesthesia, we collect the OX from the ovaries. Then these eggs are collected and then we um, mix the egg with the sperm. Sperm is also prepared. Semen is also washed, prepared, and sperms are given to the eggs. And then when fertilization occurs, after four days, three days, five days, we give the uh, sperm embryo again to the Uterus. Uterus is also pre endometrium is also prepared with the hormones and we give the embryo to the in the uterus. This is IV for in vitro fertilization. And embryo transfer, IV PT, in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer. Next, ICSI. ICSI I said yeah. is a revolutionary change for male infertility treatment where in severe oligospermia, azospermia, obstructive azospermia, we collect the retrieve the test the sperm from the test tube with needle. And then uh, with the egg collected by ovum pickup like uh, before, 
we may, uh, the, this uh, sperm is injected within the egg by, by separate, uh, by special um, manipulator, special microscope under embryologists. They inject the sperm within the um, ovary, within the, sorry, within the eggs. This is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. And after three or four days, when fertilization occurs, we, after three or four days, we uh, do the embryo transfer in the endometrium cavity. This is ICSI. And now came the term cryopreservation. What we will do with the excess embryos? We usually give two embryos to, at a time. And if there is more embryos... Appa, appa, uh, appa, to, sorry to interrupt. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Our next class came to start at time. time we have to conclude. Now, I think that's the point. Cryopreservation is going to be... Thank you. The cryopreservation is a term. When we have excess of embryos, we what we do with the embryos? We, them, we put them in the nitrogen, liquid nitrogen uh, yeah, flask or cylinder. This is a term came cryopreservation. Embryo transformation use the party. there is surrogacy. We where we can hire the uterus of the other people uh, to transfer the embryo or donor health nea I want to finish my work where I am very much interested in fertility preservation. It means when a children or a patient is given chemotoxic, chemotoxic drug or radiation, so we should look for her. We should think of her reproductive life because I told that we are now the cancer therapies are very good. Patients survive after cancer treatment. Cancer survivors are many. Young patients are good and cancer survivors. Then they come for after their life, good, so they come for the reproductive life. For the reproductive life, when we give any chemotoxic drug or any radiation drug, we must uh, preserve or think of their gonads, their, their eggs, this should be good, their uterus should be good, or their uh, semen uh, parameters should be good. fertility preservation, society we will keep and uh, the knowledge ragu regarding fertility preservation during any one of the toxic treatment. Thank you all. Thank you for patient sharing on a Lomba lecture. Thank you, Appa. Thank you. Shubhacha, Shavaika organizer, Thank you very Thank much, you, Appa. Yes, yes. Thank you. Bye, Krishna. Amitali, off way.